Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. We are finally back in the new year. We're carrying on this series. Now, if you remember, over the last couple of episodes, we set up a couple of satellites, one around Kerbin itself and one around the moon. And we've also landed on both Minmus and the moon. So the logical next step is, of course, to try for one of these next planets, one of the closest ones to us, either Juna or Eve. So, let's first take a look at the tech tree, and something that we're definitely going to want before we go into these planets is ladders, because these fins are going to be massive and have a gravity, we're not going to be able to jetpack back up into our ship like we did on the moon. And I'm having a look around, and I think that's really the only fin that I want to make sure I have before our first interplanetary mission. Oh, it's exciting, guys. We're only getting there very, very shortly. Groundbreaking fins for Kerbal Kind. So, yes, we don't need too much more science. So, and actually, I did notice this new fin, the Science Archives. That must have been added between last time I played because I'd never seen this before. But it seems like it's information on all the things you've done and advising you which planet you might want to try and go to next. That's really quite a cool thin. And just seeing all the planets lined up there is pretty awesome. So I do like this. But yes, we're going to go and we're going to send out some space probes. Going to get ourselves some science, enough to buy ourselves some ladders. And then we can start planning our first mission to a new planet. Oh, it's going to be fun, guys. I can't wait. So I jump in here and I think about what I want to do and decide actually I'm going to load up the Kerbal Station, the space station that we designed. I'm going to modify this so it already has its own launch stage and it already has all the staging set out on the side. I think why bother rebuilding all that when I can just modify this to make it into a space probe. This is going to be something expendable that we're going to shoot away, get ourselves some science, transmit it back, and then just send this thing out into the sun or something to get rid of it. We don't want it to be like a manned mission with Kerbals on it, and we don't want to have to worry about putting a few on it for it to return back into Kerbin. So, I take it down to just one fuel tank and add on these side-mounted thrusters. Really, just because I've never used them before and fancy trying them out. I think they look quite cool. Could be nice. They seem to give a decent amount of thrust. Not the best, but still. Why not? Why not try it out? So, I stick four of those on the side of this fuel tank. And this has a pro body, it has solar panels and batteries to store some electricity so it won't die on us. It has transmission devices for getting that science back home without having to bring the fin. But it doesn't actually have any of the science tech itself, which is a very crucial fin. So I add on one of these laboratory fins that give us lots of science. And I replace two of our communication panels. I put this down to two instead of four. As you can see me playing around for the symmetry button there. And then I replace the two that are now missing with some mystery goo. So we can get some signs from that as well. And then I stick all this on that launch stage that we already had built up and ready. And after just playing around a tiny bit with the staging of those four radio engines, we are ready to get this fin launched and away. So it's really not been much building I've had to do at all, which is excellent. So we want this to be a very simple, just send up, don't need to worry about it, get ourselves some cheap science before we get on to the really good missions. So it's good that I'm not spending a ridiculous amount of time and effort onto this mission. So, name it the Space Exploration or something along those lines, I can't really remember. And we're ready to go to the launch pad, guys. So, I'm going to speed up the video here to around four times or something along those lines. Because you've seen me do launches a million times. Well, three times, but three times is enough. It's just watching the same thing. 
so I've sped it up so that it shouldn't last too long. This design of a launch stage is still really suboptimal, it's very slow, I'm only going 60 meters per second at the minute, which is really not that great, but until we unlock some more powerful engines and some more weight efficient fuel tanks, there's not really much that we can do about that I'm afraid. So we're going to slowly make our progress up, I noticed that I had forgotten to drop that landing stage, launch stage even, so I do that, we're down to 5 engines. So we're starting to pick up speed a bit more now. It's weird how it starts so slow, but then it's good that as we drop more and more parts of this stage, we start to get more and more acceleration and thrust per unit mass, which is a very good thing. So I start my gravity turn. I'm always cautious about doing this with such a slow and heavy ship because the component due to gravity is much, much greater than it would be in a normal launch stage, meaning that I want to turn later and at a less steep angle to still get the same result into vector velocity. But as you can see, we're down to three engines now. We're starting to get up faster now, shooting up almost at 500 meters per second. So I start to think about which planet I might want to go to. We've got two options. Eve is the planet one in from us, and Juna is the planet one out. And originally I planned to go towards Eve just because why not a lucky guess and all that. I haven't been to either of them in this series, so I thought why not pick Eve? That seems like a good one. It's purple, it's a nice colour. Let's go for it. Dropping down to our final engine to get the maximum efficiency on this fuel. We start to circularize our orbit and it takes forever because we're going slow. So I warp up closer to the apoapsis to get a little bit more efficiency and hopefully, hopefully speed up this process. And it kind of works, we're still sort of chugging along. But eventually we see that periapsis appear and shortly after we have a circularized orbit which is excellent. We haven't bothered docking with the station because we don't want to waste that fuel. That fuel will come in very handy when we start to do interplanetary missions and we need all the fuel that we can get. So I boost out and see what kind of trajectory we can make ourselves to intercept with a planet and I realise that I'm probably on the wrong side of curving to be doing this. As you can see by my fin disappearing and not doing what it wants to because I'm just going to crash into the surface of it which isn't really great so I swivel this around to the opposite side starting to get somewhere expand it out and I try to see what we can get and it's around about now I notice that Eve actually has a kind of crazy inclination compared to Kerbin whereas Juna has one that is almost I think it's 0.1 degree difference or something like that, so it's a much, much easier to get an intercept with a lot less work involved. And seeing me here targeting Eve and not really getting any interception nodes, which is worrying. That's why I noticed the inclination difference. Check it against Duna. See, that is a much better idea, so change my mind to go for that one. So, I need to change a bit of what I was planning on burning to see if we can get an intercept node, and we have one there, and it's looking actually pretty good for an intercept, so I bring it down, and that little flash there shows us that for a moment we had a collision course, or at least we're going to get into the influence of Juno's gravity, which is excellent, because it means we can start to get some of the science from being in space near Juna, which I'm very, very pleased about. So I line it all up so that we can start to swing the ship around, get ready for the maneuver node and burn to hopefully get ourselves an intercept with Juna. That would be very nice, wouldn't it guys? So I time warp around until we're around just before our maneuver node. I typically try and get it so the estimated burn time is split equally half before we hit the node and half after so that we don't get too early or too late as best as I can. So I line it all up with as little torque as this ship has, eventually get there and we start to burn. It's a three minute burn I believe so it's quite a big one 
we're going to use quite a lot of the fuel on this remaining column of the launch stage. But that's alright because again we're not planning on having this ship return. So we don't have to worry about really fuel efficiency or anything like that. As long as we can get there that's all we need to worry about. So we can watch now so the trajectory expands out at an exponential rate starting slow and eventually shooting up almost as quick as I can zoom out to watch it. We get to a time where we will escape curbing influence and now we just need to expand it out to get that intercept with Juna. Now ideally for an intercept you want your apoapsis to hit their orbit at the point where you're going to you're going to hit them so that you slow down and immediately get captured into an orbit around the planet. However, we're not so lucky. We don't really have anywhere near the right time to be launching for Juna, but we still want that science. So it's not too much of a worry. Maybe in future missions we'll try and plan it out a little bit better. But not this one. This one we're just going to burn over there, get some science. A very carefree mission. You see me here trying to get the focus onto the ship for some reason. KSP doesn't want me to do it until I burn away slightly. So I fly up until we are out of Kerbin influence. And I believe this is the first time we've been out of the Kerbin system. So that's got to be a point to remember. So I decide to take some experiments. And we're getting hardly any of it for transmission. But it's still better than nothing and it will get us that little bit of science to get us a nice little ladder for our Kerbal exploration missions. So I go to transmit it and I find this new feature that's clearly been added since the last time I played the game, that if you transmit data, it also immobilizes that science equipment so you cannot repeat readings. And I think that's a good thing really, because what used to happen is you could send a probe out and do a million readings out in space and get a ton of space, a ton of science even, and it kind of defeat the purpose of the whole game and the exploration and all the fun parts of it. And I didn't think that was a very good way to play the game, so I'm glad that they've done a patch clearly to fix that issue. I'm very happy with that. So I think I take one observation of goo and keep my other goo and my laboratory for when we actually get into the Juna system and its sphere of influence. So doing a very, very small correction burn here to get us onto an actual interception because I kind of overshot it on the first burn. So I don't really need the maneuver node. I just burn very slowly, a tiny amount, and we get our intercept. So we then time warp around, and it's a very tiny intercept. We're going to shoot slingshot right past Juna. Clearly not the best intercept you would want, but for a probe mission, it is absolutely fine. You can see there the two the orbit, the two planet and the space station converging very nicely onto this one point. And almost there, almost there we go. We are now in the sphere of influence of Juna. Very, very nice. And I'm looking around trying to actually see where it is. I can't seem to spot it anywhere, so we must be pretty far out. So I take a look at where the sun is and where Juna is on the map to try and get a bearing of what direction I should be looking. This is just over 90 degrees and it's up a bit. So I'm looking up and around trying to spot it and there it is, just where my cursor is. You can see Juna away in the distance foreshadowing of missions to come perhaps who knows who knows so i take the science readings they're not actually giving me as much science as i was expecting mainly because of the fact i'm transmitting this data so i don't even know if we will have actually quite enough data to do the the ladders straight away so it may be that i have to launch a second probe off camera so that we're ready for the next episode to do something more exciting so I may have to do that, who knows. But anyway, thank God for solar panels, I am able to keep the probe running and transmit all that data back without the spaceship completely crashing itself. So I burn retrograde as much as I can to see if there's any chance of us getting into orbit around Juna. It's a long shot, we're going very, very fast, almost 4,000 meters per second before I started this burn. So I try my best, drop down into those radio engines, 
but we have nowhere near enough fuel or for us we are going far too fast for this to work and it was a nice dream but it's not going to happen today not in Hobbit today so burn out all the fuel here clearly nowhere near where I need to be so that is the end of the lifetime for our space probe I'm afraid so I spin around in frustration slightly that I'm not going to be able to get any closer which is a real shame I would like to have got a bit closer for a thumbnail but instead we'll just take a little photo here of our handy space probe and we abort the mission back to the space station space center even forget to throttle down do it again and that is us home guys I check and we don't have quite enough science for those ladders so I'll launch a couple of probes off camera to get it so we can buy it and get on with a interplanetary mission on the next episode so thank you for watching guys and I'll see you next time bye bye